How is everyone doing today? My name's Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. We're back today and we're going to be talking about another product out of Four Gate Whiskey Company. This is the seventh release, the River Kelvin Rye. Now I'm really excited for this. This is the first rye whiskey coming out of Four Gate and rye whiskey is something I have loved as a recent time at least. You know, I used to never like rye, never even like high rye mash bills. Now, rye whiskey is a lot of times what I go for at the end of the night if I'm looking for something. So I couldn't be more excited about a rye whiskey offering. This is 113.1 proof, and this is 95.5 MGP, seven years old. So what Four Gates doing is they're blending these MGP barrels, the 95.5, to get the flavor profile they want. And what I'm really curious to find out is how does it compare to other MGPs on the market, other 95.5s, you know? So we'll do a comparison towards the end of the episode and we'll see how it stands up to other things in its same category. Um, also a really cool thing that Forgate is going to be doing with this. Now this is their base rye, but over the next eight months, they're going to be experimenting with different finishes. So the first thing they're going to do is a split stave. So if you remember a couple releases back, Forgate did a split stave by Kelvin where they did split staves and they aged their whiskey in split stave barrels. They're going to do the same thing with the rye. So I'm really curious to see if that brings out those marshmallow chocolatey qualities like it did with the bourbon. They're also going to be using a ruby port and rum cast finish. So what's coming down the road just for the rye whiskey, I'm really excited about, you know, but first of all, let's find out how the base rye whiskey stands up. Let's take a look at it here. Nice dark color. I mean, this is barrel proof. You know, you can tell the color is quite dark here. Stick into the glass really, really well. Very appealing, very appetizing. Let's go into it. Oh man, forget how much I love MGP barrel proof rye until I have one again. It's just an explosion of that rye. I mean, we've got the pepperiness, citrus, there's like lemon zest almost in there too. It's got this earthy, almost like earthy quality. Now, like almost like a grassy note, but it's not like a youthful grassy note. It's a, it's just an earthiness. Mm. And one thing I love about the 95.5 mash, but at least in a lot of releases I've had, is it's got this juicy quality. Reminds me of like a, a juicy stick of gum. Mm. Let's give it a sip. Cheers. Man, oh man. Wow, that's good. I mean, that is MGP Barrel Proof. Classic. Um, excellent, excellent blending on this. Um, I'm getting a burst of flavor right on the front of the palate. All that juiciness comes out right on the front. Very, very well, like sticking very, very well to the sides of the palate. I'm not getting a huge amount of alcohol burn, which is surprising for barrel proof, but, and for rye, you know, high, high rye mash bill, but. Mm. That fruitiness and that citrus punch I just love on the front of the palate. You know, the pepper takes over a little bit on the center to back of the palate, but mm, that's some really, really good stuff. Let's find out if another MGP barrel proof rye product can hold up to the four gate. This is bone snapper rye. Now what this is, is this is 120.2 proof. And this is the same thing, 95.5. This is six years, four months. So seven years on the, the um, four gate and six, years, four months on the bone snapper. So I want to see if it does hold up, you know, uh, price wise, the four gate comes in at about $175. This, uh, this other barrel proof rye from bone snapper is about 80. So is it going to be worth a hundred dollar price point jump? Let's find out. Hmm. Wow. So Bone Snapper on the nose, it just seems muted. Like everything's muted, more low key. Um, it smells more mellow or smooth. I know we hate that word, but whereas the Forgate, they're getting like that, the flavor just jumping out of the glass. I don't know how they do it with the same product. I mean, better barrels they're choosing, the blending specifically. Way more explosion of delicious richness in the Forgate. I mean, Bone Snapper still smells good. It, sm it still smells like a nice barrel proof rye, but nose, Forget takes the cake. 
Mm. Wow. So Bone Snapper, the front of the palate, drinks more like a bourbon. A lot of almost like caramel vanilla, you know. But as center to back of the palate takes over, that's where that pepperiness comes in, that rye spice comes in. Um, I'm not getting a huge amount of sticking to the sides of the palate like I did on the foregate. Um, finish is pretty short for being higher proof, even compared to the foregate, which is really interesting. You know, usually higher proof, I tend to get a longer finish, more mouth coating in general. Not the case in this one. Mm. That front of the palate on the foregate is just delicious. It really is. Um, I wish I could tell you the cheaper bourbon was better. Uh, or the cheaper rye whiskey, but it's not. Um, in this head-to-head, -head, four gate is just better, you know, overall. Nose, palate, finish, everything is just amplified, improved. And that's not to say this is a bad bottle. I mean, this is a delicious bottle. Um, Bone Snapper Rye, if you can find this, I would still pick it up. You know, any barrel-proof MGP rye, I'm picking up if I, if I can store picks. I've got a Traverse City Whiskey Company barrel-proof rye that's just wonderful, so... But the real question is price. Now, as I said, it's 175 for the four gate, about 80 for the bone snapper rye. Is it worth the hundred dollar price point jump? No, to me, it's not. Um, you're talking double the price plus some. And I understand why four gate costs the way it does. You know, they only put out 1500 of these bottles and get them in Kentucky, uh, Indiana, and I believe Sealbach, sealbach.com if you want them. But that, that, you know, that's part of the reason why their price is so high. You know, they have, they, they do it on such a small scale. They're blending a small amount of barrels to get a small amount of bottles. And they are very limited releases, but they are really freaking good. I mean, I wish I could tell you they're not because they're expensive. I've had releases in the past. I'd be more than happy to pay the $200 for it to get. I would. Um, as far as the rye goes, it's delicious MGP barrel proof rye. And they do it better than other companies. They do. What I'm most excited about, though, is the finishing they're going to be doing, the split stave we talked about earlier, and then the Ruby Port rum cask. I mean, I think that's just going to take this ride to a whole other level, amplify it completely, and I'm really excited about that. I really am. As I always say with Fourgate, if you can get it, if you can find it, first of all, is the hard part, but if you have the money to get a bottle, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to enjoy every sip. You're going to share it with friends. You're going to love it. The hard part is having the disposable income and the money to be able to buy a bottle that's this expensive versus two of these bottles. You know, so it's a give or take. You know, if you buy it, you're going to love it. That's for sure. But that's up to you. It's up to you to decide. My money, um, it's so tough to say because the quality is substantially better in this. But I'm still taking two of these versus one four gate. Um, that's not to say someone else wouldn't buy the four gate bottle. You know, it is what it is. But once the split stave comes out, once the Ruby Port rum cask, I will be looking for bottles of that for sure because I am betting that's going to be phenomenal whiskey. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this episode today. If you like these types of videos, please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what other series you want to see or what other head-to-heads, things like that you'd like to see. Um, I would like to do distillery taste-offs, kind of, you know, like an old Forester lineup, a wild turkey lineup, Buffalo Trace. That kind of stuff. If you'd be interested in that, let me know. Um, that'd just be fun for me, trying different things, seeing what I actually like, blind them. You know, I feel like that would be a, an interesting experiment. Um, MGP's got a wide range too, so we could do an MGP lineup. That could be a lot of fun. If you are interested in getting a challenge coin, we've still got about 15 left, but we're getting low now. Um, round three is still available at bourbonsane.com. So pick yourself up a challenge coin. They're going to go soon, and then we'll move on to round four. One last thing is I have to give a quick thank you so much to my patrons who support the channel. Um, without you guys and girls, I couldn't do this. Um, I, I love doing this. And I want to do, I want to continue my distillery series. So I want to head back to Kentucky after COVID's all done, film some more distillery tours and continue that series because I had so much fun filming, doing the tours, and just talking about the distilleries and what they offer. Um, I hope you guys like that series too. So I appreciate each and every one of you watching the episode today. Um, please do subscribe to the channel. Let me know what else you want to see. We'll see you very soon. Stay insane, everyone. <laughs>